Hey, what's up guys? I am Joe from Workbench, and in this tutorial, we're gonna take a look at how to make particles in After Effects without any plugins. So the basic premise here is that we're gonna use a text layer with a bunch of periods, and we're gonna use text animators to move them throughout space to make these particles. All right, so these particles look like this. And what's extra neat about this is that you can change the direction of this pretty easily because all you have to do is change this. And now they'll go up and to the right. So unlike other particle systems, because this really isn't a particle system, you can pretty much control this thing with a path. You don't have to make any crazy lights or do anything kind of nuts in order to get this to move the way you want it to. Of course, it's not as full featured as particular or stardust. And obviously, if you need anything complex, you should still use those. But if you need some simple floaty bits, this will work. This one's pretty simple, so we'll just take it right from the top. So we're going to start by making a text layer with nothing in it. I'm gonna set this thing to Palatino because that font has a period that is round and I know that. So we're gonna go in here and we're gonna go to our source text. We're gonna make an expression. We're gonna put a single quote, a period, single quote, and then we're gonna do a period again and we're gonna type in repeat. And we're gonna do like 500 because that's fine. So now we have 500 dots. We're gonna grab our Gen tool and we are gonna draw a line and then we are gonna open up path options and we're gonna select that path we just made. So now those dots go on that line, pretty easy. So now we're gonna add an animator for position and instead of using this range selector, we're gonna make a wiggly selector in here. We're gonna dump that range because we don't need it. And now we're gonna go down here and we're just gonna crank this up. And since this basically sets us a default kind of condition, we're gonna set this wiggles the second to zero because this isn't where we're gonna move those. This is just to help us spread them out. So we're gonna close up that animator. I'm gonna call that thing spread, or actually initial would be nice. I'm gonna make these dots a little bit smaller. So changing the size also changes the size of the spacing in between. So just keep that in mind. So I'm gonna add another animator, and we're also gonna move position, and we're gonna to add to that guy rotation as well. And instead of this range selector, we're gonna want another wiggly selector. If you're a masochist like me, you can actually go through here and uh, use an expression selector so you can make looping versions of this stuff. But we're going with a simple route today because we're just want some flowing particles. So I'm gonna turn this wiggles per second down to like 0.5, maybe even 0.2. We're gonna move this different directions and I'm just gonna set this thing to one. And as you can see, now our particles are moving. Now they're not moving down the line because I don't have that animated. So we're gonna go back up here to our path options we're gonna option click on first margin here and we're gonna do value plus time times 200 semicolon. And there we go. And you can see our particles are kind of leaving a little too quickly, right? Cause there's probably a lot more up here. So what we're gonna do is go back here a little bit in that. Look, we have lots of particles ahead. Look at all those particles. So let's start with them all the way on screen. And there we go. And that's how you get some flowing particles. Pretty easy. So now I want to fill up the whole screen instead of just having this channel in between. So instead of doing the one that we've just animated, so these are our moving particles. If we change the position in here, it just changes the kind of possibility of where these things can move in between here. But that won't really help us spread them all out. So we're going to go into initial and we're going to spread out the position in Y. Because remember, this is our baseline. So Y is this way now. So we're going to go a little bit more... And there we go. You can also change tracking and all sorts of different things to bring these together. But I think this is pretty good for now. So you might be wondering how I got the blur in here and what's awesome about text animators is that you can animate blur. So we're gonna animate blur. So in the one that I had, oops, I don't want that in there. Make sure you don't have any of these selected. Just add a blur directly. I'm gonna name this thing blur. And you can do a wiggly selector if you want this thing to change, I suppose, how you have things selected. But I just want to select, you know, some particles and just have them be where they are. I don't need them to move in and out. So I'm going to hit 50% on this end. I'm going to get into advanced. I'm going to hit randomize order. And then I'm going to turn up this blur. So you can see some of those are going away now. If you change the shape to like ramp down, you can have less of them be blurry. If you do ramp up, you can have more of them be blurry. So you have less you know, sharp particles. I'm just gonna leave this set to square for now. And then I'm gonna make another blur. As a matter of fact, I'm just gonna duplicate that one. So we have blur two. I want this one to be more blurry. So we're gonna add some more blur to it. 
You see we already have some back here that are kind of being double blurred and that's okay. We're just gonna go in here and we're gonna change the seed on the random to be a little bit different so that way we don't select entirely the same ones. Let's make that 13 and let's actually explicitly give this one. I didn't do this in the examples that I had before, but let's just make sure we have something specific. There we go. So we play that, you can see that we have pretty quickly rendering particles that are really just periods. So that's how that one was done. Pretty simple. I'll leave that one in the project file that you guys can grab. So if you wanna grab this project file, it'll be on our website for a dollar and it'll contain everything that you see here. We'll call that 2D2. All right, so you might notice that this one's called 3ishD and that one's because this one actually uses per character 3D. So a couple of things were just tweaked on here. Uh, as you can see, when we open this guy up, I basically called our initial condition here spread because that's really what it does. And then our floating particles, we don't have any blur because that's actually done with the camera. You have to make sure you don't have this thing set to cinema as the renderer. For some reason, mine was set that way, but now it's classic 3D. And you just set up depth of field in your camera like normal. And then in here, you just go enable per character 3D. Then with your spread, the only thing that we did differently here is that we moved things out in Z as well. And actually I didn't move anything in X in this case because that was already enough randomization. And the same thing with the floating particles, basically the same thing here, except for we have all three values of the position set to a non-zero number. And if you want to, you can actually rotate these things in the other dimensions as well. I didn't, I just left it at Z. So as I said, this is camera aware. So actually one cool thing about this is that we parented a camera to a null and the null is pretty much in the center there. And it spins around this whole world of particles. So now that we have a little bit of that rendered out, let's click on the null and we'll hit U and you can see kind of where it's moving and then stops and the particles do the same thing. So if you need your particles to follow your camera, you're all set. All right, so that's it for this one. I hope you guys get some good use out of it. Anyway, if you like this video, make sure to subscribe. And if you have any comments or questions, leave them in the comments down below. If you'd like to help support what we do, check out workbench.tv support. While you're there, check out the blog. And as always, I'm Joe. We'll see you next time. Bye.